today's session on his portraits. I'll hand over to Peter and she'll tell you more about hers. Thank you. presentation I plan for today is as follows. I will first talk about the methodology of my research, then I will proceed with background information on standardized tests because matura exams are standardized tests, and then I will look into the three main parts of the project, which are the analogy check, uh, the analysis of various tests, and regression equation, and I will look at not only the results but the discussion and analysis of these two points. In the end, I will give my recommendations and a conclusion to this further project. To begin with, um, the first the initial idea that I thought of doing was to do something in education because I'm really passionate about education. But also, I'm really passionate about statistics and maps. So combined together, I came up with the, with the option of intertwining these two and do an analysis on the student test scores that they received in the Matura exam. So what I did was that I had to go to uh, relevant authorities, the Ministry of Education and, um, and the Municipal Education uh, Directory in order to obtain the data, the test results from the students of Pristina, uh, the 2014 test results. Uh, next, I... After I obtained the data, I obtained them in physical format, so I had to, in hard copy, so I had to transfer them and uh, put them in an Excel file and then use Minitab in order to uh, calculate the statistics. Uh, it should be noted that I was able to obtain only 3,200 uh, test results out of 5,200, but nonetheless, this should be pretty much a, a good sample to, to do such a So I will begin with what are Matura exams. Matura exams are standardized tests. That is, said, uh, that is uh, explained in the, in the law on education, uh, Kosovo's law on education. Uh, meaning that there are standardized tests, that means that they are scored in a standardized way. And the main, the main property of standardized tests is, is it's, no, it's, it's normal, uh, normally distributed bell curve. Uh, what uh, this means, is that these te normal uh, standardized tests follow normally distributed curve. This got me into thinking. Since I had already the data, I thought, why, why, why should I not check? Why should I just see it as it is? Why should, why not check if it's really normal the distribution that is that is said that it should be? So I took I I took half of the test, the general section of the test, which which is composed out of 120 points out of the overall 200 points that the standardized tests are made up. And I performed an analysis on that. So basically, I was expecting to have a normally distributed results in the general section. But was that the case? Actually, no. Uh, what these two uh, figures show, um, first, they are are the bars, which, which are the actual test results. And there's the line, the blue line, which is the theoretical curve, how it should be like. So even visually, we can see that the results are not normally distributed. But to statistically see so, we can, we can derive that from the p-value, which is lower than 0 0.05. Uh, some practical test that we do in statistics. Um, that means that the the total points of the uh, the total points of the general section of matura exams are not normally distributed. Even even if we remove outliers, which is something that I did. 
wanted just to see maybe if some, maybe if the result would change. I went on and performed the same analysis for for the specific sections of the general part of the test. Uh, but I, I did that for Albanian, and even though the the curve here looks a bit normal visually, the again the p value is zero point zero zero five, which means it's lower than zero point zero five and the thus the distribution is not normal how it should be like. Even if we uh, okay, right here are the outliers, so even if we remove the outliers the system were scored really really low, then we, we see we still see that um, the distribution is not normal. The same went on from, for English and for math. Math did not have outliers, so I performed the test only once. Um, but it's not the it's not important just to say that the test, even though they are standardized tests, they do not follow a normal curve. It's important to know the implications, why, or what does that entail. So, what does not having a normal normally distributed curve mean? This means that students cannot assess themselves. Uh, I, I, took the, the, I took just an example for GRE test scores. GRE, GRE is a standardized test just as much for exams. So students, when they uh, take the test, they can actually, whatever they score, they can actually translate it into percentiles. This means that they, uh, if they score, for example, 162, they know that uh, in their verbal section, they're in the 89th percentile. That's that's what they score. They know they know their uh, scores in relative to others. And not having such a distribution makes it difficult to to do these kind of uh, these kind of analysis. The second thing is, what does it mean for universities? Well, it's similar for universities. It's it's difficult because if you set, for example. You say you set a bar of 160 and your scores are not, the scores of the test results are, the test results are not normally distributed, then you don't know how many people will, will be eligible to apply. It may be a lot, it may be very little. So it, it, it is more difficult for universities if the, if the standardized, is, if Matura exams, for example, are not normal. And why, but we may ask, we may also ask why this distribution is not normal. And one thing that I, I was able to come up is that in, in, no, uh, in the education law, it doesn't say that they do test these questions first. And what authorities and other states do is they do test a lot these questions before they place them in a real exam. They do a lot of experimental sections where students get to answer those questions. They do divide the questions based on how difficult they are, and then they place them in, in the test. And that is not done in Kosovo, uh, or that is not required by law or, or even practice that much. So the recommendation for this would be to maybe practice, for this section is to maybe do a little bit of experimental sections where students can answer the questions and see where they really stand so that they could have an, uh, just a normal the second part of, the, of my presentation has to do with ANOVA. ANOVA is analysis of variances. It means that it will analyze different uh, groups, especially three or more groups within themselves and see whether there's a physical difference between them. Uh, the way I've used ANOVA is that I've, I've seen the, I've gotten the results for different schools in Pristina. Here I have 12 schools. Uh, and their scores in, in the Maturai test exam. And um, I, I've used ANOVA in order, to, in order to see whether they are statistically different. So it's a little bit messy, but I will try to explain what the, what the picture represents. First, we have, we have the graph. The graph will, has, a lot, it has the schools in it, and the scores that they've, they've gotten. And from the graph, we can easily see the best in schools which are in the new Madrid, the new Madrid, the new but we can also see the schools that have performed the worst, such as Kochka and Pristina in this determinatory. These two, these two schools are actually performing lower than 50%, which is the bar that is set for 
the bar that is set for the standardized test uh, scores, then the student have to the students have to go uh, have to actually achieve this bar in order to be able to uh, compete for in to apply for university. Uh, here, this table has <coughs> will give the answers to some of the questions that we may ask when we see the when we see the graph. First, are these schools uh, statistically different, uh, different different from each other? And the answer is yes. The Tuki test does a grouping, which means that it will group uh, it will group schools based on uh, based on are they statistically different or not. For example, they will have eight the unanimity trait, which has scored the best in this in this category. And all the schools that have mark, have marked have an A in them, means that they are statistically uh, same with millennium. In this case, millennium is an EP and URS will have the same uh, or statistically uh, similar with, with themselves. But Milenium uh, and the Doda, Milenium and Samifrashi are different statistically, meaning that my, the, the hypothesis for this section, which was that our, school, our schools different uh, from each other statistically, means that yes, they are. And um, another question that we may ask is, are private schools scoring better than, than public schools? And, and the answer may be seen from, from this third uh, row here. Uh, while the new names in need are private schools, then they are followed by two public schools, which I've let you know just to be able to really uh, to see it easily. And then they're followed by three private schools. The last five uh, institutions are, are public, meaning that, yes, there might be a difference between, uh, between private and public schools, even though that may be done by a t-test could actually solve this problem, or that could be solved by regression, which I will uh, later mention. Also, we can ask the question, are general schools performing better than professional or vocational schools? And the answer might, might be that yes. Initially, we have, uh, initially, all of these are, are general schools. URLC is actually a mixed one, often degrees in both in both uh, general studies and also professional topics, and Don Bosco, Don Bosco and Universo does the same. But this, that means that uh, maybe general schools are performing are performing a little better. But then, in order to really prove this, I've mentioned it in the, in uh, the regression section. It means that I have 11 results, which is probably, uh, that's why. It makes sense because some, so, some of the schools that are private are really, really small. They have one classroom only, and that's it. Uh, the, actually, it's good that you mentioned the, the number of students, because the reason why I included it is because, well, if, for example, there's an error somewhere, it means that if we have a school with 11, 11, uh, 11 students in it, the one small error could really change the results. But that is not the case, for example, with Summit for Fashi, who has 800 students, more than 800 students. So uh, that is why, for example, even though even though Yarasi is the fourth or fifth one in the, in the table, it's still statistically the same with Menelion, because it has so little, really little students the, the amount of students in it is small. We can do so. I've done. I've attached only. I, I've done uh, this anal. I've performed this analysis for Albanian math and English, but I only chose to do this for Albanian in here in case any any of you want to ask any questions or see based on these results what 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 strikes as interesting. To me personally, it's interesting that uh, American School of Kosovo. Is uh, has scored really low in comparison to to the to their overall tests or to the other to the other schools, but that makes sense in a way because they offer degrees only in English and their their courses are taught in English. So in the Romanian section, they might be a little bit uh, behind. Um, in case anyone any of you has any question on this section, I would gladly. Of the, of the project. In terms of ANOVA, it 
did not, I was not able to obtain all the results for Pristina. This means that the, the study is a little bit limited, meaning there could be possible sources of error like typing, or there could be possible sources of error because of the sampling. And that is why we should focus on how to use ANOA as a tool instead of saying this school is the best for this project. Uh, so maybe it's more beneficial to just say this is a tool that schools can use, that students, parents, and municipality can use uh, to assess uh, the schools. How can, for example, the benefits to students, the, the best thing that I could come to, that could come to my mind is if, was if we could perform an online and publish it online because it would be really helpful for the students uh, because they could, students of eight, eighth or ninth grade could go online and see which schools are performing better, what they're doing, and so they could know where to go to. It could be beneficial to parents because parents, if they want to enroll their students in private uh, private schools, they, they could see which private schools are performing better in which areas and, um, and which are the best ones that are available at the moment. This, uh, they, if this analysis, if I know was to be published, it, it could also be beneficial for the schools as, so they can know where to improve on. They could see, well, I, I'm scoring really low on, on mathematics. Maybe I should tackle that. Or especially for private institutions who students pay money to go to. Uh, that is also, it can be also beneficial for municipalities because if they check the areas where schools can be um, improved on, they could tackle them by doing extra trainings to teachers or, or any other method that is available or they can, or any other method that would maybe solve the problem of such high disparities between schools test results. Uh, the last section of my, uh, of the project has to do with, uh, with regression, with a regression equation. I got, uh, I got help with the regression, uh, the regression equation from Rika Kutori, the econometrics professor here at, at the UK. Uh, what we did was that we tried to explain the behavior of uh, students or explain the behavior of test scores, if I may say so, me meaning that we tried to see what influences the total uh, scores in the general section of the Matula exam. Uh, and uh, we did that by assigning four dummy variables because that's all the, because that was all the uh, data, the information that we already had. So the, what this means is that we try to determine how much the total scores are affected by school, the school that students attend. We did this, this by uh, setting up Jezedoda, <coughs> the uh, best performing private, uh, public, I'm sorry, pub public school, and see if the student attends Jezedoda, uh, how much points will they, will they make in comparison if they attended another school. And it turned out that the student, if the student attends Jezedoda, they will score on average uh, 14.7 points more if other variables are equal. This, uh, the second variable that we took was gender. Because we already have the data based on the student test scores, we were able to, to see whether females were scoring, were, would do score more. And the result was that uh, if the student is a female, the student will score on average 3.85, 83 points more than if the student is a male. The third variable that we, uh, that we used in the regression equation was the private, was the private uh, or public institution. This means that um, the student that is enrolled in a private, private school, the if the student is enrolled in a private, in a private school, they will score on average 15.1 points more than if the student is enrolled in a, pu in a public, uh, public institution. And the last, um, the last uh, variable that, that we used was the average student per class. Uh, what we did was that we uh, coded uh, schools that had less than 20 students per class and schools that had more than 20 students per, per class, and then we found out that uh, if if uh, the classroom is over 20 people in it, then the students um, that belong in that classroom will score on average 1.93 points less uh, if other uh, variables are held constant. Uh, however, e even though this regression equation tries to explain uh, the total test scores and what 
implications of this study because uh, there are, if we read in the literature, we see a lot of things that affect uh, student test scores. It may be FENT, FENT income, FENT education, <coughs> uh, school's budget for student, uh, whether the students cheat on the exam or not, whether <coughs> they are sick that day or not. There are so many other things that could affect students' uh, test scores. So uh, that is why uh, this regression is limited to some extent. Um, because we've used only four variables and all of, that, all of them are done in variables. <coughs> also, the, the reason why this test is a little bit uh, uh, limited is because its coefficient of the determination is 13.8. What this means is the variables that were used in the equation explain 13.8% of the variation that happens in the total score. So this means that there's a lot of, of more variation to be explained by other variables. But since we, uh, we could not get the data, uh, then this was the best, uh, the most, the best equation that we could construct from the available data that we already had. To conclude, <coughs> I want to again mention the three main parts of the project. recommendation for this section was to uh, was to just test the questions beforehand so they could uh, and work towards it so the distribution could be normal some, and and that could so that what is said in the law could actually be applied. The second part of the the second part of the project was an was analysis of variance or ANOVA from which we we saw that uh, there, there are differences between the best thing about ANOVA was if we could publish these results so that students, parents, schools, and um, municipalities could actually see what, which schools, what are, what they're performing in their best areas and their areas that should be improved in, the, in their case. And the last part was about the regression equation, which tried to uh, actually see what, what is influencing the best scores and why students and the elements that could uh, influence the total scores that students receive in the general section. The recommendation for this section was to expand it a little bit further. People in, in the ministry, relevant authorities in the ministry and municipality already have a lot more information on this than I did. So if they were able to expand it further, maybe there would be some, uh, maybe they could actually see what influences department in the, uh, in the municipality had the printed results that dis are displayed in schools or they're sent to schools. So those printed versions were, were put manually <coughs> in Excel files and then when it happened and the analysis was performed. So that is why a couple of pages, <laughs> a couple of, um, of pages were missing and nearly 2,000. Showing a bimodal distribution. Yeah, all right. 
and just just an observation. Yes, it's it's really interesting, especially to me because uh, the distributions are weirdly looking for some reason, and um, it's even visual. It can even be visually seen that they're not normal. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. even more interesting. But in the math section, even if we have zero here, because we had zero, for example, in the English section, and there was an outline for math, it wasn't, meaning that students are actually scoring really low in math, such as that with zero may be considered a normal uh, test result. So that's not normal at all. Plus, it should be taken on for account that also schools do, some schools have more have more math in them, that do have a lot more classes uh, there. So maybe here are the schools that, are, that have math classes a lot and scientifically have science classes. And here are maybe the social science schools or schools or professional schools who do have <coughs> math. The number of math courses that they have is really low. So maybe probably if we think a little bit more why this might be the case, maybe this could explain it. It's very impressive really to get the same the data you do have. I was just wondering, did you have any sort of intuitive surprises? I mean, I really like this sort of when you're looking for variables, we've got regression analysis, but were you surprised by any of the results that came out of that? From the regression? Mm. Or from the regression? Sorry. From the regression. Uh, not really. No. To, mm. to be honest, I expected that private schools would score a little better. Even though we have really, the amount of uh, students that are enrolled in private schools is low in comparison to public schools. Mm. So those, plus the, the uh, they have smaller classroom sizes, more teachers available to them. It, it would make sense, and it would be it would be uh, really interesting if private schools were not offering this education, better education than the public schools, so that, because people are putting more resources to those kind, those uh, institutions. In if, terms say, of if say you forget all the private institutions and you look at the state institutions. How will these schools actually impact students if they're going into higher education? They're not going into private schools, they're not coming from private schools. If I go to an average high school, say, and I go to the University of Pristina, how much impact will these schools have on my future? They do have impact because, first of all, you need to pass, you need to be above 50%. And in the general section in here, we can see that the last two scores are on average, they're scoring low than 50%, low than 50 which means that here we have, uh, all right, we have more than, we have around 1,040 1, uh, students who are not, who's scoring really low, or maybe the, av the their average is lower than the average, so that means they can, they're not eligible to even apply for you. The chances are that if if they do not take the test again and if they do not uh, pass the test, they, they do not have a chance on applying for university. But then they, but then for the students who have scored more than fifty percent, the results do actually help in getting to university. It may not help it in getting into private institutions such as AUT or other private uh, colleges or private universities. They do a special part, uh, a part of the admissions will depend on how, on the scores you, you uh, people have gotten in, in the maturity exams. So it is important for them. Final question, final question. Good, thank you very much.